What's up everybody, Chris here in the pit. I'm back with another workout tutorial video and today I wanna to talk about one of the most basic movements but one of the most popular movements that we do in the gym and that is the bicep curl. I posted something on Twitter a few weeks ago about just the proper way to do a bicep curl and some of the things that you should try and avoid and it actually got a lot of questions and comments so I thought it might be good to go in depth about this movement uh, in a video. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I have a list of do's and don'ts that I wanna go through and I also wanna run you through some personal tips that I use to try and get the most out of this movement. So let's start off with the don'ts. First and foremost, and, and most of these are gonna just revolve around weight selection. I say this as kindly as I can, that nobody really cares how much weight you can do on a bicep curl. Uh, this isn't a movement where you need to try and move as much weight as possible. What you need to try and do is stimulate your biceps as much as possible and often we can do that with less weight. Uh, so I'll explain how we do that uh, in, in a few minutes. But when we choose too much weight, if we pick something like a 50 pound dumbbell and do a set of eight bicep curls with it, often what we find is that we're using really poor form, a ton of momentum, and we're not really actually putting all of the weight onto our biceps. Momentum, okay, what do we mean by using too much momentum? Well, standing or sitting, if you are throwing your body into getting the weights to go up and down, that's what we're talking about with momentum, and that's not what you wanna do, because essentially what you're doing with that momentum is you're using your back and your upper body to get the weight to about here, and then you're only using your bicep to finish about that much of the range of motion. So while you may be using a 50 pound dumbbell, you, you're lifting 20 pounds worth of weight because you're not actually using your biceps to get the dumbbell all the way up. Now, another thing I see that goes along with momentum is just poor form and not necessarily curling your arm the way that you want to to get the most out of the movement. So I'll see people that kind of almost look like they're running with dumbbells or they kind of you know, hit them up on their shoulders like this. And often when you're doing that, you're working your elbows and your shoulders and your wrists a lot more than you actually are your biceps. So once again, if we choose the appropriate amount of weight, we can get a lot out of this movement and avoid some of these things that cause us not lift as much as the weight that's in our hands. I also see a lot of people uh, struggle with just the full range of motion. So what we wanna do in this movement is start in the bottom, curl all the way to the top, and then let our arm support the weight all the way back down. So we wanna go all the way up and all the way down. And a lot of times I'll see people, maybe they'll start with the dumbbell at their side and they'll bring it to here and then they're doing curls that are just that top range of motion. So we'll be up here and then Again, if we're using a weight that's too heavy, we're kind of afraid to let it come all the way down because we know that we can't curl it all the way back up. So we're doing this and you're not working the full range of motion of your muscle and therefore you're not, once again, getting the most out of the movement. And the last thing that kind of goes along with that, that last piece that I talked about is letting the weight just fall once you're at the top of the movement. So you curl the weight up all the way to the top and then you let it come straight back down just dropping down to your side, where your muscle, your bicep, can both contract and then it can lower the weight back down. And in a lot of cases, we're stronger actually lowering the weight than we are curling the weight back up. So if you're curling the weight all the way up, you want to also kind of resist it on its way back down so that you're contracting and then you're getting this, the full benefit of the second part of the movement. Okay, now that we've gone through the don'ts, I wanna talk about the things that you should do. And first, before you pick up any dumbbell or barbell, whatever you're curling to isolate your biceps, establish what that bicep movement is going to be. So are you doing a hammer curl? Are you doing a dumbbell curl? Are you doing a barbell curl? Are you on a machine and you're doing a cable curl with one arm or two arms? Establish what that movement is first so that you know what type of weight to select and what the proper form is gonna be for your movement that day. We talked about it before. I want you to go through a full range of motion once you select whatever that movement is. So like we talked about, curl all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. You're gonna go full range of motion so that you can get 
everything out of the movement. Something that I like to do when, before I actually perform this movement is I like to flex my bicep before I grab the weight. Just, you know, really quick, go like this, kind of actually feel it so that you know what you're supposed to feel at the top of the movement. Try doing that before you actually pick up the dumbbells so that you know how it should feel when you come up here. And I think that that'll help you get a little bit better of a mind-muscle connection and it'll help you get the most out of the movement. Okay, and the last two tips I have for you guys, I'm gonna grab the dumbbells again to show you uh, what I want you to do. Uh, and really, these are things that I've just found over time that work for me, but as you're curling up, I like to actually think about my pinky finger. So when I'm curling up, I like to think about bringing my pinky to my shoulder. So not even necessarily just curling straight up, but curling up and twisting my hand a little bit. That's really gonna get your bicep to contract as much as possible at the top of the movement. And like I've said probably 20 times already, the key here, what we're after, is getting the most out of this, this movement. And lastly, I'll turn to the side. Um, something I see people do a lot is they are curling a lot with their wrist while they're doing the dumbbell bicep curl. So we're kind of almost bending our wrist in. I know that's hard to see because these dumbbells are big, but you're not only curling up, but you're curling with your wrist and bringing it like that. I like to keep my wrist as straight as possible so that I'm not using my wrist or my forearm at all. Once again, for the last time, I promise, what we're trying to do in this movement is isolate the biceps and get the most out of the movement on that muscle group as we possibly can. So if I keep my wrist straight, I'm not using any of my forearm or my wrist to curl that weight up. It's all of the tension is on my bicep as I do that movement when I keep my wrist straight. So that's a list of the do's and don'ts. I hope this is helpful. If you guys have any more questions or any comments, feedback, if there's anything that you do that you have found uh, is beneficial, please share it. And uh, good luck the next time you go in the gym and do curls. Please select the right weight. Please use proper range of motion, proper form. Get the most out of the movement. Don't worry about the amount of weight that you're lifting. Just worry about isolating the muscle group. And that can go for the biceps or any other muscle group that you're working. Uh, like I said, I hope this helps and I'll talk to you guys again soon. See ya.